Uh, we can thank you for, for inviting me uh, and uh, I appreciate you sharing the session, including me as, as a speaker. Uh, I'm Barry Dunit from Kent State and I will be introducing our research looking into photo-induced processes uh, through uh, molecular interfaces. I would be focusing on natural photosystems today where we are providing for a first principle-based perspective on the kinetics of uh, processes. Um, should um, Leah for acknowledgement uh, mention that this work is done in a collaboration. It's uh, funded by DOE. Uh, we collaborate with Professor Eitan Geva from University of Michigan, who is a quantum dynamicist, um, uh, with Margaret Schoing, who is a molecular dynamicist, and uh, we are providing for the focus on the electronic structure. We're combining our tools to provide for that comprehensive, a multi-scaling perspective on uh, complex um, uh, um, interfacial processes. So I, I hope that my discussion today will be useful. I will be focusing on the electronic structure aspect. Um, should mention that we have two type of, of uh, systems that are of biological uh, significance um, that we are investigating in our group. So I would like to briefly mention these. The first uh, echelons of, of studies, we look into contributing to design of products uh, forms. Uh, in this example, we are considering platinum for uh, complexes where um, with a um, controlled reduction at the cancerous cells, we can find that the reduced form undergoes conformational changes with the platinum plus two reveals a cis platinum derivatives that uh, leads to the death of the cancerous cells. Um, in other aspects of systems uh, we'll be focusing today, um, we are looking into nature to learn lessons. Uh, uh, there are efforts to synthesize molecular systems. Here is an example of a triad that is widely studied. Um, and the idea is to understand conformational uh, effects uh, and see how can we understand these effects leading to the chart separated states. In other studies in our group, we are looking into native forms of photosystems, understanding the spectral signatures and the underlying uh, electron transports, uh, electron transfer reactions leading to the photosynthesis functionality. So a main, a main feature of the electronic structure framework that we are pursuing pursuing is that uh, it provides for a polarization consistent uh, perspective with respect for, of the molecular system in its condensed phase. So in, in this main equation tool of density functional theory, we're looking into the functional that translates the density and providing energy. So here we're suggesting for achieving that uh, consistency, focus on the long range contribution to the functional. These are understood to be represented by the exact exchange expression. But now uh, the main point is that as we are considering a condensed phase, that contribution needs to be weighted and screened uh, consistently with the dialectic constant that is associated with the environment. Um, so I will uh, jump to a illustrative example uh, to provide a, a overview of the underlying trends uh, with respect to this uh, uh, approach. So here we're considering C60 and we are going to provide insight to the spectra of C60 now in a condensed phase. Starting with the single C60 in the gas phase to the left, we show calculated electronic structure aspects. We are showing the orbital gap here to the left at different levels. And then we are showing the calculated ionization potential and electron affinities. Now, uh, if we had that exact functional, uh, which is unknown, we should find, we know that we need to find that the orbital energy is the HOMO, highest occupied molecular orbitals and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals should be aligned with ionization potential and electron affinities. However, uh, widely used functionals have this caveat where the orbital uh, gap collapses. This has been addressed quite successfully now over the last decade or so with these new functionals that provide for tuning of the gap. It is first principle based tuning. 
Um, and indeed, you can see that now we have correspondence of the orbital energies with the corresponding ionization potentials. And now in turn, um, we are also finding that these energies are reproducing quite well in a predictive quality measured values of the ionization potential and electron affinities. Okay, so now we want to take the same level of success to the condensed phase. A quick way to, to now take the electronic structure to the condensed phase is through polarizable continuum models. Very briefly, we take the electronic density of the molecule projected on its molecular surface, now allow it to be polarized by the environment. Uh, we do that self-consistently self in a polarizable continuum model sense. All right, so now let's use these different functionals with PCM. So what we find here first with b looks like we have good agreement between the gaps, but we have to be careful. We want to understand trends of the dielectric constant as it varies. Uh, so careful examin examination of, of the orbital gap shows that now actually the orbital gap is still very similar to that in the gas phase. It did not change. What did change as it should, are the ionization potential and electron affinities. So that's in a sense, an example of getting the right answers from the wrong reasons. We want to be predictive. So let's use it with RSH. With RSH, however, we have a similar problem as with the B-chilip when we turn on PCM. What I mean is that the orbital gap remains open as it should have been, it should in the gas phase. It did not get renormalized to the condensed phase. It's only with that approach of screening the long range interactions that we find now the gaps to be consistent. And in turn, uh, we find them to be also consistent with the measured values of ionization potentials and electron affinities. So that's a reason to celebrate. And it also reason um, or a way to go ahead and calculate excited states. Looking into the excited states, um, uh, we have two dominant peaks in, in the measured spectra at around 3.6 and 4.6. Now, as we take this, the system from being um, of single C60 spectra, going to clusters or thin films, um, we still find these two dominant peaks, but there is this emerging feature that is redshifted, lower peak, but still um, significant peak at around 2.7 electron volts. That, uh, that peak is reproduced only with a screened RSH PCM approach. And when you are using at least two molecules within that PCM. So that highlights that indeed uh, we confirm interpretations that the spectra uh, indicates existence of excitons in this organic material. And um, we point out the success of the approach with the dimer to reproduce the excitonic binding energies that have been measured. Other levels of theory similar to those that I have surveyed before um, actually miss to see that excitonic state or providing agreement with excitonic energies. All right, so we have the two main caveats of traditional uh, DFT. The orbital gap collapses in the gas phase. Um, and one of the results of, these, of this collapsed gap is that charge transfer state energies that are calculated based on such uh, functionals are underestimated in the gas phase. In the gas phase, they should be destabilized with respect to the exciting states. So we address these with the rain separated hybrid functionals and turn on the PCM to affect the, the effects, they represent the effects of the dialectic environment. And to do so consistently, as mentioned before, we are, we are reconsidering the contribution of the exact long range interactions, they should be screened as parameterized by the, by the dialectic constant. So we have uh, provided for benchmarking for this approach, looking into the transport properties, looking into charge transfer state energies, looking into triplet energies and provide uh, good agreement with benchmark experimental values. Today, I will be motivating the use uh, of these um, uh, framework to study processes in natural systems. Um, one of the issues that draws our attention is this uh, recent success um, looking into re-engineering for the systems. Very, uh, very quickly, Bacterial Reaction Center here is composed of the special pair and two branches that are isosymmetric uh, in structure, 
but uh, not in the function. Uh, it is only branch A pigments that are known to be active in the photosynthesis, the char separation process itself. So what is in the environment of these branches that leads um, to this uh, um, asymmetry in the function? And um, recent success here by this, these experimental groups after long efforts, finally they have been able to make changes in the environment to see that now we can affect, this is the native form, 100% through uh, branch A, and then in some mutated form uh, reported, are able to switch the functionality for branch A to branch B. So we want to be able to look into the environment affecting these functionality of the branch pigments. So going back to the native form, uh, we are considering spectral trends reported by, by uh, experiments uh, two-dimensional electronic spectroscopy by the group of Jennifer Oglevy. These are summarized here. The key spectral trends that we are considering are those due to the special pair, uh, looking into the excitonic uh, energies. There is this uh, splitting of energy. Considering the bacterial chlorophylls that are the first pigments in the branches, there is a spectral shift uh, that is noted here where we find a branch A being um, blue shifted, and then the next pair, pairs of pigment, we have opposite sign of the, of the shift between the, two, uh, between the two spectral peaks of these pigments. I should uh, introduce uh, very quickly uh, that the dialectic environment, the effective dialectic environment of branch A is understood to be uh, less screening. Um, whereas here, because we have uh, for example, the carotenoid hydrophobic environment is more screening and therefore affected by a lower dialectic constant. All right, so looking into these spectral peaks, uh, we have considered the special pair itself. Um, there's some discussion in the literature to understand uh, the energies of the excitonic states. Some uh, suggest that there are, the splitting is a bit larger than interpreted by Professor Ogilvy's research suggesting contributions by other pigments to the excitonic splitting. Um, I should emphasize that the difficulty in assigning these peaks is because of the blue shifted state being semi-dark and some overlap with other spectral peaks. All right, so we are looking into the special pair uh, excitonic states energies. As you see, we can scan with our approach the dialectic constant as a parameter of the calculations and find that at around 1.7 dialectic constant, that splitting, excitonic splitting is in good agreement with the one that has been interpreted by Professor Ogilvy's group, uh, providing some kind of confirmation to that interpretation. Also looking into the opposite trends of spectral peaks, uh, shifts between branch A and branch B of the bacterial chlorophyll and the bacterial phyophytine, um, we point out the difference in these two pigments is the ligation of the magnesium ion. Um, so here we are finding that invoking different functionals um, where the screening is not invoked, is not used, results with all of these pigments show blue shifting as being increased as electric constant. It is only with the screening, a uh, screen approach that we find that now the um, um, phyophytine is redshifted with increase of the dialectic constant in agreement with the uh, measured trend. So we have a well benchmark approach that allows us to calculate potential energy surfaces. Um, we can now use it to ask questions with, regarding the kinetics. Um, it is not only the, the quality of the potential energy surface, it's also the level of theory that is important in describing that kinetics. For example, in this benchmark system, we're looking into photo-induced charge transfer um, using the same energetic parameters. If we go to the semi-classical limit, essentially we miss the transport, the transfer. Uh, it is only at the quantum mechanically consistent level of theory that we find consistency with the measured values. So I would like to emphasize that and apply it also here to the molecular triads. Um, uh, we are uh, finding that charge separation in the molecular triad is of a charge, uh, uh, charge transfer followed by charge transport. Charge transfer from the bridging moiety porphyrin um, 
then uh, the semi-charged separation state followed by fully charged separation. Uh, there are two main type of configurations to consider, a linear and a band configuration. Our rate calculation suggests that it's the second step being the rate determining step becoming prohibitively slow when the system is bent. So really what we find to be the bottleneck for charge separation in this molecular triad is finding that the system is linear, which is entropically less probable than is the bent configuration. Um, and uh, we have uh, considered different combinations of, of sampling the, in, the molecular system by uh, polarizable force field versus uh, typical force fields and then different levels of density functional theory, highlighting the importance of the functional. We get the best agreements with experimental measurements with this functional and combination of polarizable force fields. And I will finish here. Um, with this slide that uh, provides some kind of uh, advertisement to a tool that we have provided on GitHub in collaboration with Geva and, and Margaret, uh, where we automate the process of calculating the rates at interfacial, molecular interfacial um, systems. Um, okay, thank you. I hope I am on time. Thank you. Let's, let's thank Barry. Questions from the audience? Any questions from the virtual audience? Well, let me say I, I um, apologize if the topic wasn't really part of what was uh, planned. It's focusing on density functional theory, but I'm definitely open for further discussions if anyone finds this of interest, um, looking into how to scale it up to biological systems is definitely something that we are of interest.